in about one day and 20 hours, the voting will end. So if you're in pro rank, uh, and are at, uh, if you're either, you have to be prestige one and either be in pro rank or have 50 wins for the season, you get to vote. And you get to vote to increase power or decrease power, increase provision or decrease provisions uh, on three cards for each section. So I'm going to really quickly explain uh, why I've picked what I have picked. Um, let's see here. Flip. That's better. Okay. So um, I'll go through the buffs first and then I'll explain why I'm nerfing what I'm nerfing. So Hopper Singer, this is a card that you probably don't see much, <clears throat> but it's my three-star vote. And it's because it has it's kind of like what I call a keystone card. Like this card living and being alive means that you can play a lot of other cards in Skellige, like uh Bear Witcher Adept that heals itself every turn. Not through portal, but like from hand, right? Hermit heals itself every turn, right? Uh, this guy heals himself when when gets berserk three. Uh, these heal themselves every turn when when you do damage, and then Svalbard cultists both do damage and heal themselves. Then there's a lot. Uh, uh, there's also some golds, right? So like Vildekarl in bear form heals itself. Uh, Heime Flamitica heals itself, and Joanna can heal an ally. Heron Kaduk can heal uh, adjacent units, and of course Sarah's Fearless can heal allies. And this is not another card you don't see much these days, right? Uh, and of course Skellige also has lots of ways to do damage. So if we filter over here by Skellige, um, there's a lot of bronzes that you don't see played much. Uh, Terra Crew Plunderer only is played in Self Wound, for example, and even then, it, not everybody runs it. Uh, you don't see this card play very often. You almost never see Svalblood Butcher, but but all these cards uh, and of course Svalblood Priests have the ability to do damage to friendly targets. Uh, Raging Bear also. So, so there's a lot of cards in Skellige that do damage to your own units and then other cards that heal those units. And every time you heal, the first time, only the first time that turn, this spawns a Siren. So it can become a two-point a turn engine that doesn't go tall. It goes wide. Uh, it's not just for self-damage. Self it will also work with Alchemy. So you might see Alchemy decks with Melusine. Um, people used to play Melusine and Alchemy. Sigdrifa's right is an Alchemy card, right? <laughs> Um, Berna has good synergy with, with Fukusia and with Melusine because the provisions of the alchemy card it plays are based on the amount of rain on the opposite row. Uh, little Hafru's, uh, damage themselves, right? So, like, and they're bonded. So th this used to be a card that was played in alchemy and Hafru's Singer has good synergy with it as well. So, um, and then Kelpie. Kelpie heals, uh, well, boost units that are damaged, right? I don't know if that counts as a heal. But basically, like, it, it may seem like a irrelevant, insubstantial buff or whatever. You're like, oh, no one's going to play. No, this will enable new, new archetypes, new types of decks. So that's why it's my three-star vote. And I think it's very important that we promote both new type, new, new cards like new decks and also new ways to play existing decks. Like right now, the way there's only really one way to play alchemy. You play Ale of the Ancestors, uh, you play Crow Clan Druids, and then you you infuse in, infuse the Crow Clan Druids, and, and then they get really, really, really tall. Well, this doesn't go tall, but it still gets you points, right? And gives you a different way to get points other than I sure hope my Crow Clan preachers live. Um, also, it's a druid, so it can trigger Getty. There's other cards. Uh, in Skellige that also have synergy with it um, in kind of a tangential, in a not super straightforward way, but like Artis. When you have Artis on the board, everything that gets played damages itself by half its power. And that includes your units. And then you get to heal those if you have something like Flaminica on the board or Joanna or whatever. So anyway, lots of interesting possibilities. Next one is Diviner. Uh, Buffing this by one power because it competes with Mage Torture. Right now, everybody only runs Mage Torture in Assimilate. And Peller already exists at 4 provision. A couple of people suggested this at 4P, but that would just be a better Peller with Assimilate tag. That's silly. Um, and also, the game has already way too many 4Ps that everybody plays. We need good 5 provision cards. 
This would help assimilate by uh, prevent, you know, helping them with locks, with defenders, right? Because defender blocks you from being able to put spying on stuff, being able to coup things, um, being able to copy bronze. You can't copy a bronze that's behind a defender. It, it, it just kind of blocks. Uh, a defender just kind of shuts you down. Well, this gets around that, and it's an assimilate engine. But right now, it's four power, not almost not worth playing. So just a little power buff will help. And then Milena. This is a this would be a buff to movement decks, a small buff, but Milena being on the board means that Triandbor is a lot more valuable. Milva, the immune one, is a lot more valuable. And of course, uh, it combos with sentries and, and mentors and other, other cards. It could get you a bunch of points. So those are the buffs. And then the other buffs that I'm that I'm doing are um, two buffs to vampires. Uh, the three star vote is going to proto flutter because in vampires like you already have a ton of good nine provision uh vampires you have oriana which is a good card at 9p you got verena which is good at 9p um and then you have debt laugh and crimson curse at 10 provisions you know um unseen elder at 12 uh, regis at 13 but at eight provisions like there's basically nothing you know Except we have Catacan and Proto Flutter, which nobody plays almost like ever. Uh, occasionally you'll see a Catacan, but I haven't seen a Proto Flutter in like two and a half seasons. And these cards deserve some love. Uh, this allows vampires to not go tall. So you, you could potentially make a deck with Catacan and no Flutters uh, and just go wide, you know, and, and not be so susceptible to tall punish. Um, it has good synergy with Unseen Elder, good synergy with Oriana. It's just a very cool card. Uh, and right now, it plays as an 8 for 9 if it gets answered. Can we at least do 8 for 8? So that's why it's it's my uh, provision buff vote. Same with Proto Flutter. Proto Flutter is basically like... Kind of like a, a, a rebate for situations where you, you don't have enough targets to bleed. Right? Ideally, you spread your bleeds out and you, you get value from them through a card like Oriana. But a lot of times, there's just not that many targets. Or you need a reach card, right? Like you want to have a card that isn't Renfrey's Gang <laughs> that, that lets you stay in the round. And if opponent passes, you can catch up quickly. Catacan is not that card. Necrat's not that card. Alp's not that card. Flutter is like seven, eight points if you count the leader charge that you usually use. With it, those are not reach cards, right? Proto Flutter, you could lead her three times and drop it, and you know, four and twelve, uh, six. It would play for sixteen points. This can be an alternative finisher, right? Whether in Golden Necker, or you could use it, um, you know, with Unseen Elder because it stacks like it as applied lead to stuff. I don't know it. It's just a very interesting card, but it's too expensive where it is. So that's the other buff. And then finally, my, my uh, two-star vote for provision buff is Imlareth. Uh, this sees zero play, even in Frost. And you might be thinking, what's what's this going to aid provision going to do? Um, But nine provisions is like the cost of Royal Decree, right? It's the cost of Naglfar. You're never going to play Imlerth over those cards. But eight provisions, eight provisions is Nickers. A lot of people play Nickers, right? Nickers is three extra tempo. Of course, it thins itself out of the deck, but it's also a brick that you want to mulligan away. But Nickers is a very good and strong card, right? It's, it's three for eight and one thinning. Well, Imlerth is also three for nine and one thinning. The difference being that that he consumes the card, like you have to discard a card from your hand, right? He doesn't pop up from the deck, so you have to draw this. But when you when you do that, it's like playing that card because you get the points. Obviously, you don't want to consume an engine, but if you have like a fiend in your hand or an incubus or whatever, right? Some card that you don't want or you don't need to play from hand, you just want the points. Well, this gives you the points and draws a card. And because it's your top card, it has synergy with Naglfar. So there used to be, you know, there's some good combos with where you would Naglfar, play one, and then Imlerith gets you the other card, right? 
Uh, you can also do things like you could eat a um, a fiend with it, right? Like right now, you have to play fiend right at the beginning of the round. Otherwise, it like gets loses a lot of base power. Well, with Imlirith, that's another reach card that you can have. And so, like six cards into the round, you can just drop Imlirith, eat fiend, and now it's an eleven, right? And it enables Mamuna. You could in round one play your Mamuna. Because Imlareth put that card in the graveyard. Another way to use it would be in a Necromancer's Tome deck. Right? Sometimes a Necromancer's Tome, like, you don't always get to put one of each bronze that you want to resurrect in your graveyard and, uh, you know, before, before you play the Tome. Sometimes you might have, like, two Alps in your hand or two uh, Gang Canes or whatever. Well, this will let you eat one, put it in the graveyard, and then, you know, or a Piggy or whatever, right? The point is that this is a card that like is almost playable, but it's just too expensive at nine. You're never gonna play this over Nagelfar or Decree or Curse of Corruption or like lots of other things that go to the nine provision slot. Probably soon Riptide also <laughs> will be nine B. But you might play this over Knickers in a in a Thrive deck, in a Consume deck, in a Relics deck. Uh, I could even see myself playing this in Vampires or like any deck that wants a some short round push or reach. And it allows for some very interesting combos that are unique to monsters, while at the same time increasing the consistency, right? Uh, so I think monsters have traditionally had bad consistency. And yeah, he's a Wild Hunt card. So you could play it in Wild Hunt uh, and use it to consume an Egurn and then Osral it or something. You could use it to consume a Morva in round three and then Osral in the same round. There's a lot of cool stuff you can do. You can combo this with um, Iris, the neutral card. There's just a lot of uh, skillful ways to 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 use Imlarith, but he needs to be a little cheaper. And so I I highly uh, suggest we vo we vote for this. So I would appreciate it if you guys give it your two star vote. Um. Yeah. Now I had a deal with Metallic Danny. Uh, they asked me to put Yaga in my list of... Uh, they asked me to put it as my two-star power buff. They wanted me to buff Yaga by one power. I told them I don't think that would make the card playable, but I would do it uh, if if they did the same for Proto uh, Unfortunately, when Danny made his video, uh, Proto Flutter wasn't in his list, but it was an, an like also suggestion. Like He had his top three, and then he also had Proto Flutter over here. So, in the spirit of fairness, I'm gonna put Yaga as my, if, you know, as my other potential power increase because Danny mentioned Proto Flutter, so I'm gonna mention Yaga. Okay, let's talk about the nerfs, and this is very important because the number one thing I want to get across is I am not against consistency, as we've just talked about with like the Inverse buff. Um, I, I do like it. I, I don't think it's fun when you lose or win games because I'm not drawing something. Um, but I think it's very dangerous to make certain cards free, right? Cards that you want to play, like... Because uh, right now, Sewer Raiders are basically free. Like, four provision cards are basically free. You don't pay any... There's no opportunity cost. Because you need 25 cards in every deck. That means some of them are going to be 4P and you're really not like playing with 165 provisions usually because you need 25 cards minimum four piece so 100 provisions is always accounted for so it's really like five and higher that you are actively choosing to invest in a zero investment card like sewer raiders should not have eight tempo and one thinning most people evaluate one thinning to be like seven or eight points right when evaluating cards that's why knickers for example is eight provisions right because he's three tempo and one thinning. He's not a three for eight, okay? He's an 11 for eight. Now it makes sense, right? Why is he? Same, same with Roach. Roach is not a four for nine. Roach is a 12 for nine. 12 for nine is right on the curve with lots of other cards. So similarly, Sewer Raiders, right? Is a 15 for four. That's insane. You know what's even more insane? Casino Bouncers. Casino Bouncers is, uh, because you can get it from Eventide Plunder, gives you two, th two thinning, 
hit and 11 points. So that's 16 and 11, that's 27 points worth of value if you play Eventide Plunder in round one and, 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 and get bouncers. That's insane. Like, if you've been playing in Pro Rank this season, you may have noticed there's a lot of Syndicate, particularly Jackpot. And they always get all their cards. And they play a ton of stuff that you have to answer, and they often will go for a 2-0. Usually, Syndicate is the least played faction. It's the hardest to pilot, it's the, it's the most rarely played. But look, this season, Syndicate's like up there in, in the play rate. You almost never see that. And if we filter to the top 100, you'll notice that Syndicate has the highest win rate of any faction. What changed? Well, last last balance council, casino bouncers and sewer raiders got buffed. Val points out that Nicker self thins, uh, whereas these cards you have to play. That's true, right? So it's and, and there's a risk of bricking because you have two cards and you don't want to have both in hand. But the risk of bricking is there with Nickers too because only one of these is a brick. But yeah, so this may not be like 15 for a four. But even as even if you forget the thinning, even as an eight for four, it's still better than every other Syndicate bronze. Like this is a seven for four with a tribute one. This is a six for four. This is a six for four with an order. This is a five for four and it's an engine. Like. Why would anyone play any other four provision cards if we start putting eight for fours in every faction? That's insane. It's insane. So, how do we fix it, right? If, you, if you've been following me, you know that I've been putting casino bouncers at the plus one power slot with three stars. Like the last two councils, it's been my number one vote. That's like, that's what it needs to happen. It needs to be five provisions and five costs. Then, you're playing like a nine for six with one thinning. Okay, that's a very reasonable, that's like a sergeant that thins one, right? That's where this needs to go. What about sewer raiders? Well, it's way too good as it is. So, uh, but there should be like some difference in casino bouncers and sewer raiders. So I'm proposing uh, making it three power. That way it's a six for four, which is in line with lots of other four P cards. Lots of six P, uh, six point four provision cards get played, right? And it, this one would thin. Right now, Casino Bouncers cause other problems too. For example, Eventide Plunder is supposed to give you a spender. That was why it was created. Because Syndicate had a problem with, like, it had like the Deathfish problem, right? Not enough, like, too many coins, not enough spenders, or, or, or too many spenders, not enough coins. Eventide Plunder fixed that, uh, or, or made that a lot smoother. And ever since Eventide Plunder was added, Syndicate has been like, a lot less clunky to play and a lot more fun. Well, right now, if you don't have Eventide Plunders, like, here, if we type the word B and you see the four provisions uh, spenders, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One of these cards is not like the others. Every single one of these can spend coins. This one just has a fee that summons the other copies. So it's only a one time use. Uh, this one's also kind of terrible because it it you usually like i mean it's good points at least it's six points but if you've already played your casino bouncers from hand or you just don't have them in your deck because you're not you're trying not to be a abuser like event type plunder just gets a brick sometimes and there's no reason for that let's put this back at five power five uh, at five provisions and then we'll make it five power uh similar deal with uh skirmishers because of the buff to skirmishers and the one power buff to, to coral this season, for the first time ever, the best Skellige deck is a 26 card Renfree Compass deck. That is insane. And Compass got nerfed to 11 provisions. It didn't matter. This gives you so much tempo that it's in every single Skellige deck. Literally, it's in Self Boon. Mac by Self Boon has it. It's in like the 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 Rain deck that plays Heat Wave and a 40 point Flaminica that Lirio had in his article a screenshot of. The guy who plays it is 2600 MMR. Um, like it, it's in Re like it's in every single SK Renfree deck, and it's in Pyro. It's just it's everywhere because it's a no-brainer. It's like an extra free tempo for something you want to do anyway, which is draw and discard. Like it's like you're thinning your deck 
And if you have a Coral, you're doing two damage. And then on top of that, you're also getting four extra tempo. Good luck. If, if you're against Syndicate and they have these in their hand round one, they're winning round one. Like, and probably the game because they have cards like Flaminica that demand a last... Or, or, or Sov or uh, Arnie of, or, or whatever that demand a last say answer. And they also have really strong bleeds. Like, these would need to be like two, po two power to be ba remotely balanced at four provisions. Uh, a much better change would be to put them back at five provisions. Now you might say, well, nobody was playing this card before. Fine. Well, I've been trying to buff at Shinmiri's suggestion. Uh, I had... Um, I had uh, Morkvark as one of my, my, my buffs. Right? If you want to buff this card, make, we'll make this. Listen, vote for Coral and Skirm to go back to Sanity. And then... I like for each of like if if one of if, if one of them gets uh, reverted, I will put more quark as a three star vote. If both of them get reverted, I will also put in a plus one power recommendation for Skull. Right? Like if you want to buff consistency, buff the tempo of this. So it doesn't play as a four for eight without a skirm. But like just like honestly. Making Skirms 4P or like bouncers and ready, that's a CDPR type thing. That's just the kind of stuff they used to do when they wanted to boost the play rate of an archetype. And it would ruin a season. And this season has been ruined. It's the worst meta since the Bounce Council went live. Like it's the first meta where I'm just like, oh my god, I can't, I can't play this. Like every every game, it's smork, 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 jam a million points, go to round three, who's got a best short round finisher? It's just, it's not fun. Okay, finally, Erendite and Dana. Erendite is a is a card that like might, you might not see on many other people's lists, but Erendite is fundamentally an unhealthy card. Now this season it's exacerbated it because everybody's running all these tempo stamp cards, but really like ultimately look at it, think about it. This is a card that's way rewards you for getting blue coin and also rewards you for just vomiting out points. There's nothing interesting about. Play as many points as possible, as fast as possible. There's no decision making, there's no thought, there's no finesse, there's no... Like... Gwent at its best is about considering trade-offs. Do I spend this key gold here and get ahead, or do I save it for a future round? With Erendite, there is no considerations. Because you can spend all your golds and all your points up front, you essentially get refunded by having a big sword, because this never overkills. So it just becomes more and more carryover. Coral's not nearly as much of a problem as Skirms, that's true, but a card like this that is basically a two points a turn, like two, two damage a turn, sometimes more if it's burned with burn, it's four. With strat Stratagem Click is two, uh, Scald is two. Um, a, a card like th this, does Compass also discard? Move the rest of the graveyard. I don't think that's considered a discard. Um, by the way, tier also works with skirms. Like, you can use tier to grab a great sword from the graveyard and put a skirm back. The skirm pops out and gets boosted to eight power. It's insane. Uh, or not eight power, but because it's only the first time. Yeah. But he's. The fact that this plays for 13 tempo if you have a skirm in your hand is also silly. Uh, and it used to be nobody ran it because it was uh, five provisions. Well, and they didn't have provisions for it. But at 4P, you could easily run it in warriors. Uh, and, and it is a warrior, by the way. Um, the issue with Coral being seven power is like, like all the other engines, like even on Scene Elder is six power. Like engines should be answerable. I don't believe in any engines that dip, that want that like your opponent needs to answer having more than six base power. I think that's just bad for the game. Um, right, unseen elder used to be six. Now it's seven, but unseen elder is also like twelve provisions. Coral is eight, and coral used to be nine. It got changed to eight when compass got nerfed to ten to put it out of golden necker decks. 
But like, the fact that like these two have the same power, and this is two bleeding a turret after the deploy, and this is two damage every time you discard. Like, it's just, I'm not saying they're the same card, but in general, like cards, like should, you know, that's why whenever somebody suggested a power buff to Verena, I've always said no. If opponent's gonna use a Mastercrafted Spear or an Assassination or a, a fully buffed Skewer Doll or something to, to answer your engine, they should. That's fine. That's what control should counter engines. And, like, I shouldn't have to use a, a Heat Wave or a Curse of Corruption on this thing. <laughs> it should trade. Like, because it already got one thinning and two damage off when they played it. So, if I play a six provision removal card, it shouldn't trade down to a seven, eight provision card that already played for, uh, for a one thinning and and two two damage maybe more if there was a stratagem on the board. Yeah, and so uh, I already explained Arondite. It just kind of promotes unhealthy gameplay. It is never fun. Like there are no interesting decks that run Arondite. They're all point slam, point vomit, tempo abuse cards, and they all prefer to get blue coin, or the, or they like play red coin and and they play musicians of Blaviken, which is another card that might be in a future list of nerfs. It's just a lower priority than some of these other things because uh, these are in like a lot more games than this is. Although th this will also need to be revisited in the future. Um, finally, Dana. And it's important to keep in mind this only is a power nerf to the first form of Dana, not the second form. The second form will still be seven power. Um, so here, what's going to happen is right now, if you oftentimes with Quacks, this is played in round one. And if you don't answer it immediately, well, first of all, it already gives them eight, eight or nine carryover on turn one, right? Because it boosts everything that's not a relic, and almost every every unit in harmony is a non-relic. Um, some some harmony decks play Quarixis, but generally speaking, it's like <laughs> it's like seven or eight points of carryover per turn. And if you don't answer it, you might as well forfeit. Well, a card like that that you have to answer or you lose the game. That, that plays for a lot already on deploy. Like on turn one, this already played for seven plus nine, that's 16. And it's a harmony engine. Like that's a lot, especially when a lot of that those points are carryover points. If somebody plays this against you for red coin, <laughs> like, they risk nothing and they have a potential to just win the game. Well, this should be, we're proposing to make the six power. Lirio made the same suggestion. It just makes it a little more answerable. You don't have to have Teshim or Heat Wave or whatever to answer it. Uh, oh, I missed my Riptide. Guess I lose the game. You know? So, and also, as a bonus, that means there'll be less Quacks. Because right now, one of the only, like, competitive decks that runs Quacks is Dana. And it just wins some games because Quacks cheeses a win. Pulls out an Artaud or a Renfrey or a King of Beggars or a Regis or whatever. And it's just silly, right? Like, it. Th this should not, this is not how Gwen should be. And it would not nerf Harmony at all to make the first form 6 power. Um, if this, you know, is... Yeah. It, it, would, it just it incentivizes better play. Okay. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, if you have any questions or if you have any suggestions, uh, leave them in the comments. And I will see you guys next time.